Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze here. It is Thursday, January 20... <laughs> I do this every time. 24th? 24th. 24th. <laughs> January 24th. <laughs> January. Uh... I know it's, we're in January, so that's good. But uh, we're back. Uh, we had a great stream on Tuesday where I was demonstrating my new mammoth-sized Cintiq Pro 32. Uh, it was awesome. But I ended up doing an image that I wasn't crazy about. We did this mammoth, and it was okay. It kind of it kind of got away from me towards the end, and I'm just not super happy with it. So today, what I thought I would do is kind of recompose it and redo it and kind of show you how sometimes when you get an image that you don't like, uh, especially working digitally, you can go back in and redo it. And so today is going to be a lesson in improving a crappy piece of art. <laughs> so there you go. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to take... I'm going to take that image I did on Tuesday. I'm going to recompose it completely. You still use the drawing, but uh, and then we're going to do a new painting. And uh, and it's going to be, once again, on this awesome Cintiq right here. This nice, big Wacom uh, Cintiq Pro 32. And uh, so consider this another demo, I guess, because it's uh, I'm digging it. But anyway, uh, back to the green screen. So the, the image you see behind me, that's the uh, that's the one we did on Tuesday for those of you that weren't there, and uh, and it was fun. We just I kind of challenged myself to do this mammoth out of my head without any reference, and uh, and it was fun to do. But like I said, I tried to do it in flat light, and it just and it, I don't know. I just lost. It just got away from me. So um, so like I said, today I'm gonna I'm gonna have some fun with some lighting. I want to get some modeling in there. Uh, and I've since gone back, did a little research on anatomy, and uh, so I'm going to make things a little bit more accurate and a little bit more fun. And as usual, I've got my trusty, dusty, dust and duster, dusty, <laughs> duster over here. <laughs> hey, guys. My going? son, Dustin, who's going to be manning questions from Facebook. And then over in Sarasota, Florida, I've got Nick Birch, my business partner, and he's going to be manning questions from all the other platforms that we're on. I think we're on Twitch and Twitter and YouTube and all Facebook over. and a whole bunch of stuff. Everywhere. All simultaneously. So we get a lot of questions. I know a lot of you get upset sometimes that we don't get to your questions, but the fact is we've got, we're getting questions from five different platforms. And... And I'm trying to draw and answer questions at the same time. So I'm doing my best, I promise. And someday I'll get to you if I haven't gotten to you yet. So be patient, please. <laughs> but, uh, uh, and oh, also today. For today, since we are creating another mammoth. And uh, we thought maybe it might be nice because it's uh, we're getting coming to the end of the week. Why not give a little treat to you guys? Uh, for uh, those of you that are watching the live stream today. Go to my website, creatureartteacher.com, and any of the lessons, anything you purchase today, on your way out, type in the, the checkout code MAMMOTH, M-A-M-M-O-T-H, and you'll get a mammoth savings of 20%. 20. 20%. <laughs> yeah, so you'll save 20% off your uh, on your bill when you uh, check out. So, so there's that. Type in uh, the code MAMMOTH and get 20% off. So let's go to the screen, Dustin. Hey, okay. Dustin, do the thing. Do the thing. Aaron, do the thing. Do the thing. Uh, actually, do I have ability to turn my fan on? Because I know you're probably hot, but I'm really hot. I mean... Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm I hot. look hot. <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> I mean, come on. All right, I'm just turning that on just a little bit because I need a little air. And as usual, I have my hydration, hydration. module. Stay thirsty, my friends. Oh, I am. I'm so thirsty today. All right, so here's the screen. So this is what I did last week. And so you're gonna see, you can see already kind of what I've done. So this is what I did last, uh, on, not last week, but on Tuesday. And it's okay. I just, like I said, it's just kind of the fur and everything. It's just not where I want it to be. And I want to, I want to, I want it to be more dramatic. I want more form. I want more lighting drama. Uh, all of the above. And so I took that. I took the same drawing. Basically, what I did was I took everything and I stripped it down to just this. There's that original drawing. And then what I did was I created a new format. This is 12 inches by 24 inches, I believe. And I dragged 
the drawing layers over to here so you can see that's where that's where those are if I turn these on or, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. if I turn those on and uh, let me do this this way the moment you said that wanted more lighting I just instantly thought Aziz light <laughs> <laughs> From Fifth Element, right? Fifth Element, exactly. <laughs> um, you can see here's there's the whole there's the whole drawing right there. So I just recomposed it, and oops, there we go. So I just recomposed it. Then I went back in, and oh. I continued. What? You know what we forgot to do. We forgot to put Nick up. Nick, 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 Nick. Nick, yep, Nick, Nick, Nick. you're right. Sorry, Nick. I forgot you again. And uh, somebody's asking, uh, is the Zutik also generating heat? Uh, that's. Uh, did you see that? What? I just completely drooled all over my show. <laughs> no. <laughs> wow. I just uh, spit all over myself. The Zutik. I had a mouthful of saliva and I said Zutik. <laughs> no, the Zutik does not generate heat. Although my computer... My Mac, uh, Pro, Mac Pro, uh, draw, creates a lot of heat. Uh, there's the unboxing. I'm checking out. I was just checking. This is. Uh, I did an unboxing video. Nick, Dustin and I did of um, uh, of the thirty two. The thirty two. Thank you. I got to pull Nick up here. Nick, 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 Nick. Yeah, we did the. Um, we started the filming last week, but we were busy with other stuff going on. But we finished it. We finished the filming yesterday, and I just finished editing it today, and so Dad was in the middle of uh, reviewing it. <laughs> Hello, Hello Darkness, my old friend. <laughs> oh, Nick. Oh, Nicky. Nicky. All right, so, uh, let's see here. Is that right? Yes. Christian writes, Aaron is lusting over his Cintiq. Yes. <laughs> I mean, do I want to make this smaller? I've got some of the fur going. No, I, you know what? I don't. I'm just going to do this. Why is it taking so long to transform? There we go. Okay, so I am going to just jump in. So I've got the drawing done. One of the things I've done is I've gone in and, and was a lot more careful with the, the fur length and some of the groupings of the fur to get the fur to follow the form of the trunk underneath. You know, the the trunk and everything wrinkles just like a, a, an elephant nowadays that doesn't have the fur, but that the fur has to sit on top of that. So the fur is going to catch some of those, that form a little bit. So I added a little bit in there, as you can see, you know, throughout here. Whoops. That's not what I wanted. There we go. I want this. There we go. I don't want it. I don't want it. So I'm just, just hitting some of this. I just and I'm knocking some of the, the underdrawing back. 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 Back, I tell you. Back. Just knocking some of that back. Back. Run, you fools. <laughs> Run, you fools. Huh. There we go. <laughs> that was pretty good, Dustin. Run, you fools. Run, you fools. <laughs> there we go. So what I'm going to do now, huh, huh, and I'm going to add, let's dive into the local color. We're actually saving time today. I am uh, just diving into the painting because I've already done the drawing. So once again, just to clarify, I'm taking this old image, the, oh, the image from Tuesday. I blew up, reconfigured the, the actual uh, arrangement so that we have a horizontal and then blew the drawing up. Oh, the other thing I did too is I researched the tusks a little bit. The tusks tend to grow out and then go in this way. And since we're looking straight at them, they're going to be kind of the forcing of perspective. But I redrew them, brought them down a little bit more, and I purposely broke them up so that they break the negative space in kind of an interesting way. Um, and I, you know, I like, I like having things go off screen and come back on. I like breaking up the, 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 the two dimensional space that way so that we can create some nice negative spaces, positive spaces, what, and, and what not. What not. <laughs> so there we go. So that's what I'm doing there. So now let's just get in here and start to draw. And also I think it'd be really cool would be, um, 
if we have enough time left over to use um, some of the uh, um, hair brushes just to add a little extra effect if you're down for that. I might be down for it. I just, I want to make sure that I'm not... Sometimes you can overdo the hair brushes. I like to use the hair brushes when I'm doing something that's photo real, mm -hmm. and that's what that's what I use those for. Um, I still want this to have a painterly feel, so I may not use the hair brushes. Although um, I can get some, we might be able to get some nice texture out of it that I can build off of. So maybe I will use them. I'm not sure. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sorry, I got to puke breath. <laughs> All right. To be a good script writer, do you need to be a good novelist? Um, no, well, no, but I do, th it's interesting you say that. I think script writing and novel, uh, and writing for novels are two different types of writing, obviously. Um, basically, the difference, in when you're writing a script, you can only write what you can see. Whereas, in a novel, you have all kinds of free reign to describe a person's feelings, to just go to go back in time to give you know extra story to, to give context for different things, but you know in a in a script you really are only writing what the viewer is going to see. So um, so but the thing is, a good novelist and a good script script writer they both know story right. They need to know story structure. Um, but they are completely two different disciplines. So, you know, initially, I don't think, no, I don't think you need to be a novelist in order to be a good script writer. But I do think there's disciplines within the, the storytelling and story writing that overlap that you do need to understand. You know, story structure and character and world building and all of that kind of thing that I think both, both disciplines need in order to be good. And maybe in a way one can possibly complement the other. Yeah. I mean, I, I, yeah, definitely. But I don't think one, you have to be able to do one to do the other. Right. Uh, today, okay, once again, I just want to remind everybody, if you're, if you're new coming in, that we have the promo code MAMMOTH. M-A-M-M-O-T-H. That's MAM MOTH. MAM MOTH. Uh, when you go to my website, CreatureArtTeacher.com, when you check out... Use the, the promo code MAMMOTH and you'll get 20% off any order. YouTube question. Can you please show us someday how to animate one color transitioning to another color? Like when a character blushes or holds their breath and turns purple. I ask because I have no idea how they do that. <laughs> well, one of the very simple ways that they do that is you have one that's the color and you have one that's the other color with nothing in between. And you can cross dissolve between the two. Okay, so you can basically you change your exposure uh, gradually from one to the other so that there's a transition. So you get this smooth transition. That's how like when you see a cross dissolve where the frame doesn't change in a, in a movie and but you want to show time go by uh, in an animated film. We use uh, like from night to morning. We use two different paintings. One is nighttime. One is daytime, but of the same layout. And we just take the take the two and we just cross dissolve between the two a long cross dissolve and it looks like a transition from day to night and that's basically how you do the same thing on a character changing color question can someone get hired at disney for for writing a script absolutely we hire i don't i say we loosely because i don't work there anymore but they they hire script writers all the time and a lot of times script writers become directors there now or and i shouldn't say a lot of times nowadays uh, they're starting to become directors there. And uh, the writers are starting to become directors. And uh, they're hiring great writers there. Uh, have you tried drawing other extinct animals? I'd love to see a dinosaur drawn in your style. Um, you know what? I did do a... Let me see if I can find it. Let me pull it up here really quick. Elephant. Sabretooth. Say... Saber tooth. A tooth that is like a saber. Uh, tooth. No, I don't know where it is. Doggone it. Yeah, see, Nick's pulling that up. What's that? What did I save it under? Uh, let me just let me just bring it over here. For some reason, I couldn't find it, Nick. But thank you for pulling that up. 
Let me control, they did the thing. save this image as to my desktop. Bonk. And let's go to my desktop, my full crazy desktop. There it is, Sabertooth. And let's pull that over to fear. Here. So, this is a Sabertooth cat that I did back in 2015. That was a long time ago. But what I did was I took one of the skulls, I found the skull online, and I drew over the skull and built it out and then added fur. Um, and I did kind of like a forensic rebuilding. So I, I had the skull photo and then just started drawing muscles and drew the, the skin over the top and then added fur. And this is the image that I came up with. So uh, that was a lot of fun. This is a saber tooth cat. This is with the, uh, with the fur brushes, like the photo too. Yeah, well, this is a little bit of the fur brushes, but then I drew over the top of it as well. So uh -huh. that's that's how I got that texture. So there you go. There and you as far it. as the color and the look, um, that was just me speculating. I've, I've looked at other cats, and I kind of made it a little bit similar to kind of, you know, somewhere in between a tiger uh, and a lion. Obviously, the more leaning towards the lion, but there's some markings in there I pulled from tigers as well. So there's that. It's cute. Yeah, it was fun. I would like to do some dinosaurs. With feathers, by the way. Question, how do you know when to change the tip of your Wacom change the tip of your Wacom tip? That's from, you're from the Department of Redundancy Department. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know when to change the tip of your welcome tip? Well, the tip of the tip is right here. The tip of the tip uh, is the right tip, here. The right tip right of right. the tip. I, uh, um, when it's not working for you, the tip will, the tip will get all, just all smushed. And uh, that's when I change it. And it feels so good when you change it to, to the new tip. Because you forget how uh, how yucky they were. You don't realize how yucky they are because they get gradually yucky. That's a technical term, by the way. Yucky. Oh, yeah. yucky. Yeah, yucky. Very yucky. Yeah, that's my that's my 50-year-old man, uh, very adult term. <laughs> yucky. Yucky. That, that shot right there looks very yucky. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's how I direct movies. That That's yucky. That's just... That's, that's just so yucky. <laughs> that character just feels yucky. We should just take him out. <laughs> but um, somebody in here uh, in a video game formed a char uh, a particular character and named him Brother Bear. <laughs> oh, right on. Me likey. i got to change my... Uh, once again, I'm going back and forth a little bit on my, my sensitivity. I'll bring that down a little bit. There we go. I have tons of story ideas, but I don't know how to finally shape up the story itself. I always get stuck halfway in the process. Anything I should try to figure it out? Well, there's, uh, I've got some books for you to read uh, that will help you figure out your problems. And if you're talking about scripts or script writing, actually it helps with any story. It helps you with structure. Um, there's a, a book called Story by Robert McKee. Very good book on structure for scripts and storytelling, that sort of thing. There's also another one by uh, called Save the Cat by Blake Schneider, which is uh, another kind of really great kind of, uh, uh, I, wouldn't, I don't want to call it a formula, but it, it helps you break down three-act plays, like it, it, films, into kind of the structure that we are all aware of and um, just how they, how they fit together. And what's great about them is that I use those things that I've learned in those books as a template for when I'm writing and I'm having trouble. I'm, I can't, if I'm stuck from a story standpoint, they're really great to go in. You start going back in and looking at, okay, how is my change in the mid act happening? Or how is my uh, launch into the first, second act happening? Are these, it's whatever. There's any number of things that you can kind of check against the, your, the story that you might be writing and it helps you identify your problems a little e more easily and then uh, and correct things. So once again, that's a uh, story by Robert McKee and then Save the Cat by Blake Schneider. Those are two of my favorite books on script writing. I read from your website that you had worked with uh, Cartoon Saloon. Didn't know that. That's awesome. And which project did you do? 
Oh, I just did. I just barely did a little bit of work for them on uh, Wolf Walkers. I did a little bit of drawing for them, but I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't even say it was enough for them to really uh, get anything from. So I just did a little bit of drawing. Wolf Walkers. Wolf Walkers. It's a film that hasn't come out yet, uh, and uh, I'm very excited for it. I really love Cartoon Saloon. Those guys are just amazing, and uh, I'm hoping to get to see. We're going to be in over in Europe in April. And uh, <clears throat> I'm hoping to get to see those guys, Nick and I, uh, over in Dublin, uh, right around the end of end of uh, April, to towards the end. Why is that? That's not locked, is it? No. In a future live stream, do you think uh, you can do something with cloth and folds and how it works with lighting? Yes. I would love to do that. I, actually, I saw that note from someone uh, the other day. And I would love to do that. Matter of fact, I'd like to put a course out on that. So, yes. I'm going to lock this in. Question, how often do you use Photoshop ba photo bashing? Uh, I'm only in high school, but I've heard photo bashing is very important in concept art. Should I prioritize learning it? Yeah, you know what? I don't use, I don't use pri uh, photo bashing as much as I used to. I was really fascinated by some of the looks I could get. Um, I use it a lot when I'm doing concept work because it helps me just get to a finished uh, idea quicker rather than trying to render, you know, fur textures or skin textures, um, especially for something that's going to be photo real in a film. Then I can just take those textures that have been done photographically and I can bring them in. I can lay them over the image that I'm creating and let them do the work rather than me trying to, to render. And then I can create my own shadows and everything. And so... Photo bashing to me is fairly important, uh, definitely important in, in concept work. Uh, do you, uh, should you prioritize it? As a young student where um, you said you're only in high school, I, I don't know that I would pri prioritize it as much as just prioritize really learning good art. Learn, you know, there's so much to creating art that's more than just drawing and painting pictures digitally. There's so much about composition, lighting, form, different types of drawing, different types of drawing and painting. Get out and learn traditional media along with your digital media. Um, these are things that you can you don't have to go to college for if that's an issue. You can learn right off of YouTube. We've got courses on our own site, Creature Art Teacher. But as a young artist, don't don't just pigeon your whole pigeonhole yourself to doing digital art. Really, this is the time for you to really experiment and expose yourself to different mediums and everything because you're young and your brain is going to soak it up and it's going to be really cool and you're going to make discoveries that are awesome and what's really cool about trying all these different areas of art including music i mean i, I would even argue that because i play music as well they they all affect one another they come together and in your brain your brain mixes them up into something new and and that only that you uniquely will pull together and create. But if you're pigeonholing yourself to just doing one type of thing, like digital art, then you're not going to expand as much as you would if you tried everything. So yeah, and as a high school student, I really recommend try sculpting, try watercolor, try oil painting, try acrylic, try ink drawing, try digital painting, to do all of it. And, uh, and you'll learn an incredible amount. So... That's my old man tirade right there. What does it mean to photo bash? Photo bashing is when you take, like what I do with my my elf characters, like when I took your eyes and put them into the elf and uh, oh. and the different textures and laid them in and then I paint around it and all that kind of stuff. So you're actually adding actual photos into Exactly. The That's photo bashing. Gotcha. Yeah. So here I'm adding a little bit of grayer color because I'm imagining that maybe there's not as much fur around the eyes. And have you seen Wreck-It Ralph 2 yet? I have not. I'm, <laughs> I'm ashamed to say I have not seen it. I have and I loved it. So you're saying it wasn't good. Oh, it was terrible. Absolutely <laughs> terrible. No, but uh, honestly it was, it was fantastic. 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 This is as good as the first fantastic. one. Fantastic. 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 So I'm going to grab, uh, bump, 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 bump. I'm going to select color range. I'm going to grab that white. And now, because I want to add a little bit of discoloration to the tusks that are the local color. 
whoops, like a little yellowing, you know, they might have a little bit of yellowing around the tusk and streaking, not streaking like naked streaking, but we're really streaking. Let's go streaking at the quad. <laughs> Ready for another question? Yeah. Uh, I struggle. Uh, I struggle with to get the right reflected color. Have you any tips? You struggle to get the right reflected color. Well, a lot of times you got to think about when you're thinking about reflected color. Think about what is that reflection? Where is that color coming from that's being reflected? So you want to use that color. And what's the color that's that is being reflected onto? So you want to take into account how those two colors are going to come together and create a new color. And often you want to think about how reflective is the surface. So sometimes, you know, that reflected light is not going to be super reflective because it's coming off of a very matte surface. Or you might have a surface that's very reflective. So there's a lot of different um, factors to think about when you're thinking about your reflected light. But it's mainly think about the, the surface you're, you're reflecting off of, which is the, that's going to be the color of the light that you're, going on to and then the uh, uh, then the surface that it's actually reflecting onto that you want to think about those those two things right there I think I said that right there uh, we go did you guys finish your review of the 32 inch continue I mean Cintiq yes uh, we finished it and Dustin did a unboxing video and we made the um, well technically you did the unboxing video I just well I mean you, you did the editing yes yeah we did the filming, we started the filming last week, we did the official unboxing last week, but we didn't get to do the official review on it, because A, you need to build a stand, and oh. B, we had a guest over over the weekend, so we had to uh, put a pause on it, but we finished the filming yesterday, I finished the editing today, so hopefully, if things go to plan, we should have the video out either later today or tomorrow. It'll probably be today. I want Nick to see it. Right. Nick, 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 Nick. Nick, 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 Nick. I just need to get the green light from these guys first. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just adding a little bit of texture. Dirt. You know, I was going to draw be... Wooly Mammoth in a Spider-Man suit. <laughs> <laughs> no. How, how would that work? <laughs> no. I've heard a spider pig... <laughs> But not spider, spider pig. <laughs> All right. Maybe I'm gonna. Maybe he gets a little blondish. I don't know. Let's go a little blondish. Nick, 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 Nick. Do you have any advice on translating correct human proportions into gestures? Like, always feels incorrect to me when I'm doing quick poses. Well, I'm not sure I understand the question, but. I mean, when you're doing gestures, you still want the same proportions. You know, you want correct proportions. And so um, just try to get in the habit of, of hitting those proportions uh, correctly. I mean, you're, you're, you're drawing, you're going to be drawing fast, um, but you want to draw accurately. And so a lot of times when people are doing their gestures, they kind of take that as drawing sloppy. And you don't want to draw sloppy. And I'm, once again, forgive me if I'm misunderstanding your question, but um, just try to get in the habit of drawing quick but accurate. And just uh, just know that you're going to be doing a lot of bad drawings. You just will. But over time, they'll get better. Please explain your inside joke. Nick, do the thing. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was something that I started because randomly I had the thought of the show... Um, Avatar Legend of Korra in the back of my head and there's a character in that show who has a who, he's a he's a rich guy he has an assistant who he tells tells her Julie do the thing and <laughs> she does the thing without him ever, having to explain what it is and it just kind of popped in my head and just randomly like I was asking Nick for for something to help out with I just went Nick do the thing and <laughs> it became our thing it's <laughs> funny so here, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put a background in there. That's I'm going to go a little uh, bum, 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 cool with it on the bottom. I'm going to do this. 
Uh, character uh -huh. designers have a clear story of every character he or she designs. You sh you should at least have a base story, a base idea. Yes. Otherwise, what are you designing? You, you know, a character designer is not designing just a look. That's not what you're doing. You're designing a character. A character is someone that has emotion, personality, feelings. Okay? That's a character. Otherwise, you're just doing a figure. You're a figure designer. If you're just drawing, you know, these characters that have uh, really no background. If you don't know who your character is, then then you've got nothing, there's nothing else to go off. One of the first things I tell people to do when designing a character, it's, don't you don't draw, it's, it's research a character, write the character. Who, what's their background? Where do they come from? What are their wants, needs? What, what are their fears? What is, you know, what drives them? You know, what is, what's their paradox? What is, what's surprising about them? All these different things. I really recommend doing that because as you do that, you, your character becomes alive. It becomes real. And you can create something that has a lot more depth. And you're going to create props. You're going to create costumes. You know, how, how would this character wear this certain outfit? Well, you're going to know that if you know the personality of that character, right? So the more you can do something like that, the more you know your background of your character, the better off you're going to be. And the more interesting that design is going to be. And then, all of a sudden, what does it do? It becomes a character. Because when you're also, when you're character designing, you should be putting your character, your drawings, your poses, not just, you know, zero poses. You should be putting them in active poses that describe personality. And so, when you understand who your character is, then you can do something that's going to describe the personality. So, yeah, I recommend that. Yeah, I think... Um... What it should be is like getting the story down, like the like the the timeline, the designs of everything else around the character, to be able to form the character further. Further, further. He <laughs> sounded like George Takei. George Takei. <laughs> you must enjoy the character. <laughs> you must understand the story before designing the character. <laughs> Very nice. So bad. <laughs> YouTube question. Do you have a course for drawing prehistoric creatures? I do not. So um, that's a great idea. I will I will do that. Um, we will get into that, actually. Uh, Eric asks, speaking of dinos, are you familiar with Charles R. Knight's dino paintings? Yes, I am. They're brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, real quick, back to the painting. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the lighting, I think. Which way should I do the lighting? Dustin, which way should I do the lighting? I could do it from the right side, coming in. Right I, I want to I show the form of the animal. See, if I do... Actually, you know what? I'm going to do it from the left side. The light's coming yeah. in from the left side. And that way, I, I, I'm going to have more shadow than light. But it will be very awesome. Watch. It'll be an epic I'll show you. drama. It'll be an epic drama. Epic drama. You watch. I'll show you. Here we go. If you could have illustrated a children's book, what would it have been? Uh, something to do with animals, animal book. I actually have a coloring book out on the market. Did you know that? You do? I do. I have a coloring book. It's still on the market. What? It's called Florida's Crazy Critters. Florida's... Amazing. I did it when I was in college. It's it is a, still out there. And it's still there. It's You can get it on eBay. Flor, Florida's Colorful Critters. Florida's Colorful Critters. I did it in college to make money. It was a freelance job. And uh, I needed to pay my rent. And so there was a woman that was doing this, this book. And she wanted me to do the illustrations. And so I said, sure. And it's still in print. It's still out there. Florida's Colorful Critters. I want to upgrade my Cintiq 2. I haven't been to Wacom site yet. I was just wondering how much does uh, how much does it cost including the stand? Well, this one, this is the high end. So don't get freaked out. This is the high end um, Wacom Cintiq. And this one is about $3,600. Um, 
I don't know how much it is with the stand because I make my own stand. As you can see in camera two here. Yeah, as you can see in camera two. In camera two. Hi. Hi. <laughs> uh, now you, you and your you and your dad uh, put all this together, the stand. Yes. You mean your grandfather? Well, your dad, my grandfather. <laughs> and uh, um. So I mean, there the twenty seven is a bit cheaper. Uh, I think it's. How much is the twenty seven? I think it's around three to twenty and twenty nine hundred maybe. Okay. Um, those are the pro edition pro models. Um, they have a Cintiq sixteen, which I demoed, which I'm going to be using on the road quite a bit. Uh, I've got that over here, and that one is uh, six hundred and fifty dollars, but it doesn't have. Oh, this one right here. So this one, I mean, if you're looking to upgrade in size, then this isn't the one for you. But this is the Cintiq uh, 16, not Pro. Uh, so there's a few things missing on this. But for me, like, it's not a 4K screen. Um, you know, there's a couple of different things that are that. But I, I don't really notice them. Uh, for me, being on, being on the road as much as I am, uh, it's a great, it's a great uh, model. I'm going to have a little, I'm going to, I'm going to do my usual, people are going to hate me for this. I'm going to do my, my Aaron Blaze shadow going across. What are you laughing at? It's now 24, they stopped creating the 27. I wasn't laughing at that, but somebody just commented that. Oh, it's a 24. I'm sorry. You're right. The 24. It is. You're, you're absolutely right. They stopped producing the 20, 27. Really? Yeah, it's the 24 or the 32. Why did they stop producing the, the 27? I don't know. Do I look like a mind reader? No. No, I, I don't know. When you think the 16-inch, what, what are your laptop uh, specs? Um... Uh, I've got a Mac Pro, a Mac uh, Mac MacBook, MacBook Pro. Pro, and uh, it's I don't know what are the specs. It's a ten, it's it's Mac ten point two or higher. I think is what you need on it. If I was able to see the exact specs, I don't know where I could find those on here. I'm not a Mac guy. I'm a PC guy. <laughs> Tim on YouTube asks, what is the weirdest thing you've ever eaten that you actually liked? Well, Tim, I am I eat everything. He ain't lying. I, know, I really do. I eat everything. And uh, um, I'm trying to think what's the weirdest thing I've ever eaten that I really liked. Uh, I've eaten a lot of insects. And I thought they were, you know, grubs, like grubs the size of my pinky, deep fried grubs uh, that were kind of gooey on the inside. I thought they were delicious. Nick had some of those. Um, I've eaten, you know, I don't know, I'm, uh, bull balls. I had some I had some bull testicles that were about that big uh, in Africa, and I ate all those. Um, <laughs> testicles. Uh, what else? Uh, the weirdest thing I've eaten. I've eaten a lot of uh, crazy stuff in Asia. One of the things I ate that I really did not like is I had a bowl of chicken feet uh, that were chilled. I had those in China. And uh, I wasn't a fan. That was They were hard to get down. They were very hard to get down. So I got the official specs up on your, on your laptop for the... Oh, good. Using the 16-inch. So, it's a MacBook Pro. It's a 15-inch uh, Retina screen. Yes. Um, the processor is a 2.2 gigahertz Intel Core i7, which i7 is a really, really good processor. Um, it's got 16 gigabytes of uh, memory RAM. Um, and use a Macintosh uh, hard drive. Uh, the, using an Intel um, uh, graphics card, which is basically an integrated graphics card into the motherboard. Um, and that's basically about it. 
So it's so it's a um, it's a medium to high end Mac Mac uh, laptop. Right. But I mean, as long as you have at least eight to sixteen gigs of RAM, you can pretty much hook up the sixteen inch to about anything. In fact, the Wacom uh, Cintiqs works on both PC and Macintosh. Cool. I've got a couple more questions. Yeah. Periscope question. What are your favorite art of books for inspiration? You know, growing up, my favorite, absolute, and I, I didn't have enough money to buy them, so I just kept going to the bookstore and reading them over and over, um, were the uh, Fr Frank Frazetta, the art of Frank Frazetta. Frank Frazetta was such a huge inspiration for me as a kid. And, uh, and like I said, I, I could never afford any of his books and so I used to just go back to the to the art store as often as I could not the art store but the bookstore I would just go to the bookstore as often as I could and I would just sit there and just soak them up I would just sit, sit there and look at the books and uh, and try to remember what they were and then go home and try to draw and um, I just absolutely loved them and then you know as a wildlife artist that's how I started out I was a big fan of the art of Robert Bateman, Guy Koliak, uh, John Siri Lester, um, and then the older guys were uh, um, Carl Rungius, Wilhelm Kunert. These are all, you know, turn of the century, beautiful, incredibly beautiful animal artists. So now what I'm doing is I'm painting in that texture, I'm painting in the shadows. See, I'm taking a little bit more time. And uh, uh, Twitch question. Do you have a certain height, distance, height? Do you have a certain distance, height, you like for your Cintiq? I can never find a proper height and I'll, and I get arm fatigue. Well, I, I like mine up and down. And a lot of people, if you can go to the over the shoulder. See, a lot of people don't like this because their arm gets tired. I'm, I'm as strong as the Hulk. Right. <laughs> no, but I just I I uh it I like drawing like this because it's um it's very much like working uh traditionally at an easel and I work at an easel uh a lot. And so, you know, keeping my arm up and painting like this doesn't bother me at all. So I prefer this kind of stance uh on my Cintiq and um and if you do it enough, your shoulder, you know, your shoulder gets immune to it and it doesn't bother you so um i like this stance so that's that's my two cents and then i you know my i've got old man eyes so i have to wear glasses but i like to keep that probably one foot distance from the screen just about Any thoughts on the artist James Gurney or his books, Color of Light, or Color and Light, or uh, Imaginative imaginative Realism? James Gurney is brilliant. Um, James Gurney and I, indirectly, we kind of know each other. We know of each other. We've promoted each other's work before. And uh, I think James Gurney is an absolute god. He is an art god. He is amazing. And... Uh, I'm, uh, I look at his, his, uh, like his Instagram account and his, uh, some of his other social media accounts, his YouTube channel. And I look at the work he does and it's just so incredibly brilliant. What he can do when he can sit down and, and, uh, crank out when he cranks out his, uh, his plain air paintings, they're just amazing. Really are. Wasn't there that one, uh, one guy that was at uh, CTN that you were freaking out so much that... Oh, Kim Jong-ji. <laughs> yeah. Kim Jong-ji is... He is... He truly is an art god. That guy's not human. <laughs> He's not human. Yeah, because he just starts drawing and doesn't even get... Doesn't even do, like, rough sketches of it or anything. Just goes... No, he just sits it. down and just starts drawing. Kim Jong-ji. Korean artist. If you don't know who he is, look him up because he's absolutely... Incredible. And how many DPI do you work in the file? Uh, the last and last time I wanted to write, I see for Zeta lines. <laughs> uh, I work at three hundred DPI. Three hundred. Yep. So and most gone. of my and most of my dimensions, like this, I, I don't do any dimension longer than twenty inches. I just don't feel like I need to go that big. 
So nothing larger than 20 inches. Like this one right here. I, well, actually, I take that back because this might be 24. Uh, let me see. Uh, image size. This is, yeah, this is 12 by 24. Uh, mainly because it's such a wide, uh, um, short height. Um, I wanted something, I wanted to give it a little bit more uh, resolution, I guess. How much do you think uh, self-discipline has to do with imagination? Well, I mean, imagination is like a muscle. The more you do it, the better you get at it. And so if you're disciplined enough to do it a lot, um, then you're going to get better. So there's my answer for that. But, I mean, you just you just have to practice at it. Really. And practice makes better. It really does. It's like anything else. You just got to practice. There, so we're starting to get a little bit of form here that I like. Have you seen the book uh, by NG called The Photo Arc? Yes. Matter of fact, <laughs> Nick Birch <laughs> for Christmas. Boom. Look at that. The Photo Arc. Nick Birch got that for me for Christmas. So there you go. Yes, I've seen it. I think it's brilliant. And I've also got the birds of the photo arc. Two amazing books that I highly, highly recommend. YouTube question. Would you ever consider doing a demo featuring a Marvel character? Beast from the X-Men, perhaps? Um, maybe. Uh, uh, I'm not big on you doing other people's designs, um, but it's something I could, I, I might consider, but I really don't like, uh, creating someone else's designs. I like to create my own. So there you have it. That's, that's my curmudgeon side. We could probably, uh, try designing one of the characters in like your own style. Yeah, that could be kind of cool. All right, so now I've jumped over to the overlay mode, and I'm going to do something. I'm going to hit some of these. I'm going to highlight some of this fur here. I'm going to highlight some of this fur. You got to paint some of that fur. <laughs> Have you seen works of Heinrich Klee? Yes, Heinrich Klee is an incredible art. Uh, the, the, the draws. No, wonderful ink drawings. So it's pronounced as clay, exactly. Yeah. My mistake. That's all right. Beautiful, beautiful work. Did and for those of you that don't know who Heinrich Clay is, I recommend that you go and look at his work. Um, it was the turn of the century. Well, well, I guess it was a turn, maybe a little earlier than turn of the century. German uh, pen and ink artist. Uh, did a lot of uh, editorial type work. Uh, animals, humans, beautiful, beautiful work. Did Walt Disney get inspired by him? Yes. Uh, they were inspired by, especially with the uh, the um, the crocodiles and the hippos. Mm -hmm. um, that sequence. Uh, oh, for um, yeah. uh, Fantasia. Yeah, exactly, for Fantasia. YouTube questions. What's something you wished you knew when you were newer into animation? I'm having trouble... Timing out poses for for a character's dance. Well, for something like that, don't be afraid to look at live action for reference. You know, just do it. Um, timing is something that you'll just over time, um, no pun intended. Over time, you'll get better at it, and um, it's something you'll feel. It's it's it becomes intuitive, and so uh, just give it give it time, and you'll get better at it. I know, that's stupid, but. Uh. <laughs> Only time shall tell. Uh, but as far as something I wish I knew when I was newer to animation, uh, man, there was so much I didn't know. It's hard to, it's hard to say because uh, there was a lot that I I just didn't know. I mean, every, I mean, from just basic drawing. My drawing is, is so much better now than when I was a young animator. You know, everything gets better. Have you ever done some art like, uh, like the 40s and 50s pinups? You know what? I never have. I've got friends that have, uh, have done a lot of that, and uh, I think it's brilliant. Um, but I've never done it. Well, I know you've done uh, 
pinup designs before, but they weren't like 40s or 50s. No. Design. Right. So here I'm trying to get these textures. What are you laughing at, boy? Oh, there's somebody commenting on it. said, draw a brute from Halo. <laughs> <laughs> In which a, a brute is a is a really really big enemy that you that you usually face off in uh, in the game Halo. Gotcha. Uh, another question: How is Snow Bear coming? Well, it's funny you ask that. We had a great session. Uh, our story, our the our teacher who did the course uh, on storyboarding, Lyndon Ruddy, uh, is going to storyboard um, Snow Bear for us, and so he flew down over the weekend. And hung out with Nick and myself and our other friend, Ronnie Williford. We all got together. And we turned it into a snow bear weekend. And uh, really made some great headway on story. And uh, meanwhile, Lyndon's going to go away and work on some of the storyboards. And uh, once he's done with that, I'm going to take over and start laying it all out. And we're going to start animation. And we're hoping to have it done this year. It kind of stalled out just because of all of our other responsibilities that we've had on uh, other projects and travel and, and whatnot. Whatnot. <laughs> In witness. Uh, YouTube question. Do I have an artistic habit that I try to do daily? I don't have any specific artistic habit that I try to do daily. I just try to draw or paint. I try to create as often as I can. And so that's really my habit. And, um, I wouldn't say that I, I don't draw every day. I don't paint every day. Um, uh, my, my advice for anybody is, you know, try to draw or paint or create as often as you can. Do you need to do it every day? No, you don't. But, you know, don't put weeks, be, you know, between sessions because you, you know, like anything else, creativity, once again, creativity is a muscle. And if you don't use it, you lose it, and it gets weaker. So this mammoth, I think, is coming up much better than the one that I did the other day. It's got a lot of form to it, which I like. Will you publish a, a How to Draw Animals book in the future? That would be awesome yeah one of the things we want to do nick and i have been talking is um taking a lot of our courses and turn them into print form and so once i have a nice full series on how to draw animals um i definitely want to turn that into a book series Faux show so here i'm going to go in and uh just darken a few of the shadows and here Darken some of the shadows within the shadows. And I'm keeping my shadows somewhat warm right now. And then I'm going to go in with uh, a reflected light. And um, there we go. And, uh, and change that up. Have you done Wolf or Wolves uh, live sessions? Uh, no. Like drawing, like drawing wolves or anything like that? I haven't, but I can. Matter of fact, oh, let me, uh, just real quick too, just to let you guys did know. You do wolf uh, I'm sure I did. Like a month ago or something. I may have. I, uh, but I am going up to, I'm going to Montana next, thir a week from today. I'm going to Bozeman, Montana to photograph wolves, bears, mountain lions, that sort of thing. Are you meeting so, up there? Yeah, I'm going to meet up with my friend Manny, uh, Manuel. Manny, 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 hopefully Manny's listening, along with a few other artists, Manny Carrasco, Carrasco, Yellowstone National Park, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and uh, so we're going to be meeting up, and we're going to be doing some photography, we're going to be heading into uh, Yellowstone Park, in the north end of the park, hopefully with the government shut down, we'll still be able to get in, but um, so we're not going to have a live stream next week. Uh, on Thursday, we'll still have a live stream on Tuesday, but next Thursday it's going to be I'm going to be out in the wilds gathering more material for more paintings and uh, having a ball. 
So with because the government shut down, did they just completely close the? Um, yeah, the national parks get shut down. Well, the, the, no, there's no one in there to handle the trash or. Right, so there's no in or out. There is nowhere out. Yep. Blink for art on YouTube says hi. I see you have some delay when you're painting. You can fix it, or can you improve it? If you disable smoothing and brush settings, I hope I can help a tiny bit with this. I love your art. I actually, I'm not having any delay. Uh, at least I'm not noticing it. Maybe when I get to the big brush, it delays a little bit, which I'll, uh, right now I've got smoothing at zero. Uh, but I appreciate the, uh, I appreciate the advice. But right now I don't have any delay at all. Is the government shutdown affecting you guys? Us? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, no, it doesn't affect us. No more than it affects anybody else in the country. No, it's mainly like the, the federal... Federal workers who, you know, poor federal workers who haven't been paid for two pay periods now or coming up on two pay periods. Yeah. It's ridiculous. We won't go into that. Uh, will you start teaching animation at schoolism? No, I teach animation on my own website, creatureartteacher.com. <laughs> <laughs> so, no. Schoolism is schoolism, which are they're great guys. Bobby Chu is awesome. Matter of fact, I'm going to be doing some stuff with Bobby Chu over in London, April 18th. And uh, I'm going to be doing a course for him. But no, my day-to-day -day is um, my own website, creatureartteacher.com. Creatureartteacher.com. Yeah. Go draw. <laughs> you already answered uh, that question uh, question did I ever read Shadow Mountain by Renee Askins no I haven't the story of a woman who devoted 20 years of her life reintroducing wolves into Yellowstone Park it's an amazing book thank you I will check that out definitely see here I'm just pushing some of the darks in here there we go there we go there we go can you shoot some more photos of your animal skulls from different angles for reference and put on your website that would be very helpful yeah we can do that actually that's a great idea put those out as a free download Speaking of the website, for those of you who have just come in a, a little bit later, um, we are running a special today. I am drawing a mammoth. And so if you go to the website, creatureartteacher.com, anything you purchase when you check out, type in the discount code, code cool. mammoth, M-A-M-M-O-T-H, and you'll get 20% off of your order. Type down this cootie. <laughs> Type down the cootie. The, the cootie's mammoth. So, you'll get some mammoth savings at CreatureArtTeacher.com. Pun intended, sir. <laughs> so, this is coming together a lot better, I think. It's got some nice drama, drama, as my, as my old directing partner, Bob Walker, used to say. It's got a lot of drama. Can you mix up some of your animal bundles? More, uh, more important, could you bundle like wolves, horses, and bears? Oh my! Oh my! That sounds crazy. Well, we could do like um, predator bundles, like um, uh, herbivore bundles, or like. That's a weird bundle. That's a weird bundle. <laughs> but um, but you you understand what I'm. Yeah. Saying, right. Sorry. 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 <laughs> I think that would be a really cool idea, bundling them up into different kinds of animals. I agree. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just going in and hitting some of these shadows, pushing them a little deeper. So I want to get this texture feeling good. Good. And I'm feeling good. There we go. And somebody comments, as helpful as zoos are, museums can be a tool too. Yes. Museums are a huge help. Are you kidding me? The Smithsonian, which, by the way, is losing a million dollars a week uh, throughout this uh, shutdown. The museums are? 
The Smithsonian is. Oh, the Smithsonian. Yeah. Um, is awesome. I love going to the, uh, the Smithsonian to, to uh, draw. So I'm just adding some texture to the trunk. YouTube question. Hello from South Africa. Man, I love South Africa. Hello. Do you have any favorite memories of the places or people you visited on your African trips? Yes, some of my favorite memories when I, uh, is when we went into the Maasai village and, uh, and, one of, and, and hung out with them. And um, uh, also, when we... I think, it was Sam, I think it was Samburu people that went with us. When we were, I can't remember if it was Maasai or Samburu people, but um, when we were in Tanzania, um, there was one night our entire camp, all the people in my in our group, they all went to bed, but I stayed up. And uh, the only guys up were the Samburu uh, gentlemen that were working the, the, the camp for us. And so I stayed up with them until 2 o'clock in the morning, sitting around the fire, and just talking about each other's culture and uh, cultures and really had an amazing time um, it was such an eye-opening experience um, that I had and one of the things that I thought was really interesting I was talking to one of the men a very young young guy he's probably about 18 and uh, he was asking me about the United States and um, and he asked me you know what was it like because the United States is just one big city and it took me a little while because I didn't quite understand what he meant. But then I came to realize he thought that the United States was literally New York City from coast to coast. And I had to explain to him that it wasn't that. There was a lot of open places just like, you know, where we were visiting there in Africa and things like that. And, and uh, to me, it just it was such an eye opener to see what the perception was from other cultures to to us. And um but and, and vice versa. I mean, there it was so much I didn't know that I learned that night, and we really had, we had such a great time that whole evening. And it was just them and myself, and uh, I'll never forget that. That to me was one of the most amazing, kind of cultural exchanges that I've ever had. Nick asks, just curious, how Smithsonian is losing money since it's a free museum? Maybe donations and gift shop. Yes, that's exactly it, Nick. Who thinks he knows it all? I was reading the article the other day. There's that's it's all the stuff that people purchase, um, and just tur you know that kind of tourism. Uh, the article was talking about how they lose, how they're losing a million bucks a week. There we go. But it is free. Free to the public. Any idea why uh, the mammoths uh, were reddish brown and not white like the polar bears, for example? I don't know. I know. Uh, I don't. I know nothing. I don't know. You know, the, it wasn't always snow there. So, you know, we're in their environment. The snow would melt. I think over time their fur would have been... <laughs> Nick says, makes sense. Just wondering. I love you, Nick. <laughs> I was just kidding. I was just razzing Nick. All right, so um, I'm going to start painting some opaques now. So what I've been doing is I've been painting in different blend modes, overlay and multiply. And I've got kind of the, you know, I started out, drawing or, or putting in the local color which was flat and now I've created light and shadow uh, with overlay and uh, um, multiply as you can see so now I want to start painting right opaque right over the top and uh, really start bringing this thing to life uh, YouTube question uh, hey Aaron when drawing as a beginner do you recommend drawing human anatomy first or can you start off with whatever animal you like you know when you're starting off as an article as an artist just draw whatever if you want to learn how to draw humans, then get out there and draw, learn how to draw humans. If you want to draw animals, then draw animals. Just, you know, try to do it the right way, which is, you know, try to learn from life if you can. 
That, that and that is if you're trying to be a representational artist. I mean, you can. I don't want to pigeonhole you right off the bat. You can do whatever you want. Um, but if you want to be a disciplined uh, representational artist, then I would recommend drawing from life whenever you can. And then learning, you know, there's a lot of stuff out there on YouTube and, and uh, um, Google and, and everything else to, to get a lot of other information as well. Hey, Aaron, I have trouble sketching in Photoshop because my lines always look too smooth and artificial. Any tips for brushes to get more a more pencil -y look? Yeah, just, you know, if you go to my, um, not to do a, a plug, but I'm going to plug it anyway. I have a whole bunch of Photoshop brushes that are uh, more natural media looking. Uh, because I, I, I agree with you. I don't like artificial looking um, brushes. You know, I, I don't want my, 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 my digital art to look digital. I don't want it to look computery, if that's if you understand what I mean there. And so um, I've gone in and made a whole bunch of um, natural media looking brushes. And they're on my website, creatureartteacher.com. And... Um, Pack number one is probably one of the best ones. It's one of the first ones I made. And if you go today <laughs> and put in, type in Mammoth, you'll get 20% off of those brushes. Like the brush I'm using now is included in that pack. So yeah, at the Smithsonian, don't they have the world's largest anaconda? I don't know. That I don't know. And we need a museum or gallery of Aaron, Aaron's work. <laughs> uh, that's very nice of you. But no, you don't. <laughs> no. There's way more people out there better than me that deserve to be in a museum. That's another thing. Always remember there's someone better that you can learn from. You can be inspired by. Like yourself. I'm always inspired by other artists. That's one of the things I love about social media as an old guy. You know, I can, I've got access to so many great artists that I can be inspired by and, and, and learn from. Um, YouTube question. Aaron, can you please show this work without the outline? Yes, here you go. There it is without the outline. So you can see how much the line really holds it together. But as I paint, um, I'll slowly... Get, start to get rid of uh, the holding line. That's the strongest one right there. And uh, But as I paint over the top, it'll slowly go away. What is my favorite art museum? Um, um, my favorite art museum is uh, uh, the Orsay in, in Paris. It's an uh, Impressionist museum. I think it's Impressionist museum. might not be specifically Impressionism. But they have an incredible collection of Impressionism. Um, yeah, in Paris. It's just, I think it's an absolutely, every time I've been there, I've been absolutely in awe. And I sit and I draw the sculptures and and I just, I spend days there at a time. And uh, I love it. The Orsay, it's beautiful. It's an old, it used to be a train station back in the 1800s. And, uh, and they transformed it into an art museum. And it's absolutely stunningly beautiful. Beautiful work. So here I'm just adding light on some of these wrinkles. I'm going to let, I think I like some of this, these dark lines coming through. What do you think, Dustin? Of the drawing, you know? Some of the dark lines of the drawing. Oh, yeah. I kind of like it coming through. I like it. I like it. Yeah, it gives it some, uh, like, a extra rough texture. Yeah. Like so in here, I want to go, I want to get some reflected light uh, up from the sky. I don't want to go too light, though. I want to try a little darker, a little bluer. Now, how far do you go on grayscale before uh, starting starting to color? Um, I really don't even use grayscale. I sometimes do, but I usually just draw. Yeah, see, I'm still going. Look how look how dark I'm going. Look how dark that is. See how dark that is? And I'm still getting a nice... Uh, I want it to be a little, maybe a little bit lighter. And a little grayer. 
for this reflected light to really pop. See, that's going to, oh, this is going to give it some nice form. Are the prices uh, on Creature Art Teacher only in U.S. dollars? No, you can you can pay with credit card from any, yeah, the prices that are there, yeah, it's, they're listed in U.S. dollars, but you can pay from anywhere if that's what you're asking. I guess that's a dumb, a dumb answer because, of course, you can pay from anywhere. Um, but, uh, there we go. I think it's got to be more down here and a little grayer. Um, what thing, YouTube question, what things in particular didn't you like about the last mammoth picture? And can you show them side by side? Um, I really didn't like the way I rendered out the fur, for one thing. I didn't like that. I didn't like, um, it was all very flat. I felt like the form um, was just lacking and so I, I felt like it was um the drama wasn't there that i wanted it to have and so that really bugged me and uh so um i decided to do this and let me pull up the other one yeah see that that see that reflected light here over on the right side we've got all that blue sky and it's gonna and it's gonna interact with some of that fur on in the shadows the shadows are going to pick up some of that light and so that really starts to feel nice to me i like that that light coming in there um let me show you the here it is so here it is um it was just kind of sloppily 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 done let me bring it down I personally feel that the uh, the snowfall was way too evenly lined. Exactly. I mean, I was talking a lot, not really paying attention, and it just I just let it get away from me. And you can see, compare this to what I'm doing here, where I'm really taking my time. There's a huge difference there, and so that's that's what I'm trying to do. I hated it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I wonder if anyone can name that. What's that? What that's from? Huh? Do it again. I don't like that. <laughs> name. I want to see if anyone can name that. So see if you can name what that's from. It's a comedy. Comedy show. Which one would you like to see? That one. <laughs> <laughs> this is awful. <laughs> Remember the costume? Yeah. I look awful. I look awful. I don't like that. <laughs> what would happen if you set the sketch uh, layer to multiply? Uh, I'll show you. No, nothing really because everything's already multiplied over the top or opaque. So if I set the sketch layer to multiply, there it is. <laughs> it really doesn't do anything. Oh, we got a winner. Chicken dinner. Who was it? Uh, Cheryl Kadzow Dunn? Dun? Yeah. Little Britain? It's Little Britain. Yes. I don't like her. Polita on YouTube says, hello, all the way from Belize, baby. Belize. Yes. You know, Nick and I have a dream of moving our families to Belize and opening up a, a, uh, an eco lodge where people can come in and draw and paint and do workshops in the jungles. And we run our business from there. We've been talking about it for years. I think it would be spectacular. So here I want to go a little bit lighter because the the, the uh, tusk is going to be more reflective. Listen to me, I'm a mouth breather. <laughs> yeah, we're getting a little bit of some nice light in here. 
can you quickly explain to us the anatomy of voice recognition technology in a lift <laughs> in Scotland? In Scotland. Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> Open the doors, please. Going out every time we hear go every time we hear eleven, we just instantly go eleven. <laughs> We do. <laughs> eleven. <laughs> like somebody say, like, yeah, it took me like eleven times. Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> what volume is this at? Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> How did you and Nick meet? Oh, uh, uh, a Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> No, we did not meet on Tinder. Uh, we both went to the we both went to the same college. We both went to the same college, but we were twelve years apart in college. And um, but Nick was doing some stuff for uh, where he's um, interviewing alumni for a project that Ringling was doing. He's doing he was doing some work for Ringling College of Art and Design where we went to college. It was a new app called Tinder. Yeah, and uh, and so he was going to interview me and actually I think some of his students wanted me because he was teaching wanted me to come and speak and that's how we kind of met that way as well um Carlos on YouTube asks hey Aaron hello can you give us a sketchbook tour someday greetings from Brazil I absolutely can actually I think that's a great idea I like doing those my sketchbooks are very personal to me so that's why I like sharing them because those are, that's a nice emotional road to go down. And I remember everything that I was doing when I do those sketches. So those are, I like, I like doing that. So yes, I would love to do that. It's always asking, asking me to uh, say a certain quote from How to Train Your Dragon by saying it in a Scottish accent. <laughs> they always steal your left sock. What's up with that? <laughs> <laughs> I just don't understand why they do that. <laughs> it's always the left sock. Every time. <laughs> there we go. Noise. <laughs> so texture, texture. I'm trying to get this sky reflected. Wait, trying to get this guy reflected? Like, trying to get this guy <laughs> reflected in the fur. Excuse me while I kiss this guy. <laughs> Making all the people in the car go, what? <laughs> what did he say? There we go. There we go, Harley Mady. So this is coming out much better, much happier. We will also be adding some environmental effects. Sam on YouTube asks, any advice for a first time dad? <laughs> oh boy. Where's the balance between drawing, working, and keeping this little monster alive? Well, the first thing you gotta do, here's my advice, tell you what, if you're a first time dad, you know what, when the baby's crying at night, you get up, you change the diaper, you feed the, well, not feed the baby. If, if the baby's breastfeeding, then you do everything else and then you bring that baby into mama and you let mama sleep. That is my biggest piece of advice for you because that will score you some points and you'll bond with your, with your child. Um, <laughs> yeah, the if you try to breastfeed, that'd be a little, yeah, long. no, I'm talking about the baby and you know, and, and, uh, but as far as, you know, the, your first priority is your family and your children. So art will always be there. Your children won't. Your children will grow. And don't regret, you know, my, my kids have grown so fast. And I get so sentimental sometimes that, you know, for the days when Dustin was young and his sister was young. And, and, uh, and I'm, a, I'm a softie. I cry at the, at the drop of a hat. And whenever I start thinking about those things, especially if we're sitting outside having drinks, Dustin will tell you I'd start I start bawling. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, and you don't you don't want to have and I don't have any regrets. I really had a lot of fun with my kids because I didn't just let Disney and my art and all that dictate my time. I really 
valued my family and you really have to so don't don't let your family drift away your art will always be there but if you put too much in time into your art maybe your family won't be so really and at the end of the day that's what really matters is our family and actually in wreck and ralph in the movie wreck and ralph too they 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 have a scene where they're talking about uh parenting and everything and how it should be like and how, how it should be done yeah and it actually makes a whole lot of sense and it's perfect yeah well good because um yeah, I look back on those, and you know, everybody tells you, you know, enjoy them now because they grow up so fast, and you know, it, that's a, it's a truth. That's absolutely true. And uh, you know, I look over and I see my son, who's twenty nine or twenty eight years old now, and uh, and it seems like, you know, just a few weekends ago, he was just this little guy running around saying, "Hi, Dad," and. Uh, I gotta stop talking oh. for a second. <laughs> yeah, but um, uh, Paul, that uh, you writes he uh, uh, about my my Scottish accent. <laughs> Scottish accent's a hundred times better than Simon Pegg's in Star Trek. Get to the auditions and do a Scots pride. <laughs> I will do my best. <laughs> Here we go. getting there how often uh, did you work overtime at disney oh every project every project yep we worked overtime on every project youtube question have you seen bed knobs and broomsticks yes i have youtube question <laughs> a comment just bought the set one brushes looking forward to using them awesome uh, i love bed knobs and broomsticks i love the animation that's the one with the soccer game in it, right? Which one? Bread Doms and Broomsticks. That's the one with the soccer game, with the they're playing against the animal. The oh yeah, like the, the Lion King. The, the predator, yeah, the yeah, predators. The, yeah, that's uh, one of my. I love the gorilla hanging off the goalpost and kicking the ball. It's fantastic. Oh, yeah. yeah, the the two D animation for that was great. And, they, and uh, there's even one point where they go underwater. And they have like that. Uh, um, yeah. That dance floor scene, all that. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. So here I'm just I'm just putting in just a few little highlights. I'm kind of dragging my feet on this, so I'm going to speed up a little bit. I've got some nice reflected light in some of these pieces of fur. What's and I'll your... probably go in and hit them a little bit more. So it's always lunchtime for me. What's your, what's your favorite fast food? My favorite fast food is... Um, Wow, what is my favorite fast food? I love burgers. I love, uh, uh, what's my favorite fast food? Um, there's Wendy's, McDonald's, Burger nah, King, um, I like tacos. Tacos? Taco tacos. Bell? No, not Taco Bell. That's, that's disgusting. That's the only real fast fast food place that... Yeah, but I mean, there's, there's good food that they can make fast. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, any kind of sandwich. I'm a, I'm a sandwich fiend. I love any kind of sandwich. There's a place here in town called Manzano's. That's probably the best sandwich in the world. Uh, it's amazing. I don't know if that would be really considered fast food. No, it's not. Fast food would be like drive. Would be like drive through. Right. I I hear you. you. You hear? So here I'm going in and just hitting a little brighter. Some of these areas in the reflected light. Just Sorry. getting a little bit brighter. Sorry to spam, but if you were living in another country but wanted to work for Disney and Burbank, how would you go about it? You got to put forward a portfolio, but I mean, a lot of people do. You just got to you got to find get into the recruiting office, and uh, which you can usually find their their uh, online, and um, and get a portfolio to them. There's a lot of people that do freelance from overseas. It's not easy, and it's you know it's harder to get in that way, but it's done. <laughs> right. 
Now imagine little Dustin running around and shouting in a Scottish dialect to people. Put your shopping cart away. Just do the thing. <laughs> That's right. My final co uh, college project has the theme memories. Uh, how can I pick up a memory of myself and transform it to a story that others uh, can identify? Well, the biggest thing is, and that's the key, that others can identify. You want, we all have a story, and I, think I, and I think most of our stories are universal. We all have universal emotions. We feel loneliness. We feel sadness. We feel anger. We feel empathy. We feel whatever it might be. And, and it's tapping into those stories that really capitalize on those emotions because those emotions are universal. And so when you can capitalize on a story that really, even though the story may be unique in, in the experience, the emotions that you feel are universal, when you can tap into those, that's when it really becomes a really great story. You know, that's one of the things that I think uh, Pixar does so well. You know, they create these really crazy worlds, but the stories they tell are universal. The idea of belonging and, and wanting to belong and and, uh, and, and love and, and all of those things. And uh, wanting to feel useful. You know, look at Toy Story. You know, they feel like they're not useful anymore, that they've worn out their, their usefulness. That's, you know, every old person that's ever lived has felt that emotion at some point. And... Uh, and that, those are things that, you know, you, you don't want people to feel them, but they're, they're, they make for great stories and great emotions and stories. How do you determine how bright reflected light should be? I, um, it should never be brighter than the light source itself. So it should never be brighter. So look, you can see that even though this is a, a, a fairly bright reflected light, look how dark it is on there. So it's never brighter than, uh, the light that's providing the reflected light. Tori on YouTube asks, you mentioned recently that multiple scene proposals get rejected before a studio decides on one. Is it disheartening to have to keep re redoing ideas? Ever had to scrap something you were really proud of? Um, of course, I had, I've had to scrap lots of things I was proud of. Um, the thing to, to remember is, especially uh, in a studio atmosphere, ideas creating animated films um any of that stuff it is all of it's always the art of um making it better and i was going to say compromise but it's not really compromise sometimes it is the art of compromise you have to maybe compromise an idea to to, to let someone else come through with a better idea but but it really is it does come down to making an idea better, a, a picture better, or whatever it might be. And um, so you have to accept the fact that that's, that's just the process. That is the process. And, uh, and I love it. I really do. And it's really taught me to push myself when I'm, especially when I'm creating on my own, um, I used to not do as many uh, iterations before I settled down on any one, but now I'll do a lot of different iterations before I'm, I'm happy because I, I've, I've learned through experience that the, whatever idea you might have, it can always be better. No matter how good you think it is, it can always be better. And so you got to really discipline yourself to get in there and create more and push yourself to make it better. Make it better and make it better and make it better. Because um, that's how greatness is created. It really is. You just got to make them brighter. Yeah. Totally. Totally. There we go. So we're getting some nice fur textures happening here. <laughs> Man, I just got a, a little... Tinnitus in my ear. It just started ringing. Oh, because of the... <laughs> no, I don't think it was that. No. I won't watch The Legend of Korra without thinking of Dustin. So what? Aaron did the thing. Oh. <laughs> I 
I don't want to go too bright too quick. So th that little bit of bright color that I was just laying in there was feeling a little bit too white and blown out. Aaron, Dustin, and Nick should get their own TV drawing show with comedy elements. <laughs> I think we should. Also, I've been watching a lot of um, Grand Tour, and I feel like that's the kind of kind of comedy we would be able to do. But instead of about cars, it would be like different styles of like art, maybe art, art, or, or like uh, <laughs> difference in teeth. I'm, glad, I'm glad you explained that. Yeah. <laughs> See, this is the kind of comedy we're talking about. <laughs> I'm currently working on a story themed portfolio. What would you look at uh, look at before I submit to Disney? Um, if it's story themed, then um, really make sure your boards are really clear, well staged. Make sure that the the ideas that you're boarding are like changes of ideas and they're in interesting ideas because um, that's what that's what the the you know you're going to be judged by board artists at Disney and they're going to look at how well you portray ideas how well you stage how well you draw and uh, um, how, how great are your ideas can you write you know those are all parts of of good storyboarding and uh, so you want to make sure that those ideas are as strong as they possibly can be so that you get you know an edge in on somebody else that that is going to be good as well youtube question my brother is studying animation and his main struggle is time pressure to meet his deadlines well you always got to meet your deadlines how did you make sure you delivered animation on time um i cranked um i'd like to say that i sat on my butt and just worked but in my younger days i goofed around a lot but i also i um i I really focused when the time came to draw, and I really cranked. In my older days, it's it's a matter of just you know put your butt down the seat and do it and just sit and draw. And um, you'd be amazed at how much time we waste by getting up, and, you know, talking to people or going to get a sandwich or whatever it might be. And uh, so you just want to make sure that you're in your chair and, and working. And that's, that's the best piece of advice I can give you. And don't, you know, when you're animating, just blow through it. I, I, I would rough out a scene very scribbled first. And then, um, once it's scribbled out, then I would check the animation, make sure it's working. If it's working, then I would jump in and start tying it down. But I don't, I don't like to tie down a scene before it's working because you don't want to waste all that time drawing and animating and then all of a sudden discover that you've just wasted your time because the animation doesn't work. So that's one of the ways I was able to get things done quickly because I, I didn't spend a lot of time on them until I knew that the animation worked. So there's a lot of different pieces of advice I can give for that. Um, by Tiger Lily on Periscope asks, when will you make part two of Hair and the Bear or Bear and the Hair? The British public are still talking about it. That's awesome. Really? Nothing has since come close to uh, to their that in their campaigns. You know, um, I didn't make. I mean, I, I directed the animation and uh, and designed the characters and animated it, but um, it wasn't my job. I was hired, so that's really up to John Lewis, the company, the department store, that hired us to do it. You know, as to whether or not they're going to make another one. Yeah, it'd be interesting um, if they ever make a, a sequel or, or a second one, but the question would be, how would they do it? Yeah. And that's, you know, I, always, I like to use the Bear and the Hair commercial as an example of how you can tell an entire movie. Basically, it's it's a three-act structure in two minutes. You know, uh, and it's, it's all right there in the Bear and the Hair. It's pretty neat. You just made a rhyme. Right <laughs> and bear in the hair. Uh, YouTube question. Have you ever considered using a vibrant color for your original sketch or underpainting and letting some of that peek through to add something unexpected to your piece? Uh, you know what? I never have. I've never thought about that. And it might be something I might try. Um, I like to go for stuff that tends to be a little bit more realistic. And having a, a bright kind of unexpected color um, is not something that's usually in my wheelhouse for my style. 
but I like the idea. I might give it a shot sometime. So here I'm just getting a little bit of fur texture inside the darker shadows. Say the darker shadows. Darker shadows. <laughs> there was Aaron, the Bob Ross of this generation. Oh, I, I I love that. If you if that's what you guys feel, then my work is done. I love the I, I love Bob Ross. When we set out doing this, I wanted to be Bob Ross is my hero. I love the man. <laughs> I swear for next for next Halloween themed uh, theme this year, you need to wear the Bob Ross bro. Yeah, that's a good idea. You need to. Yeah. <laughs> the man was a genius. And act like Bob Ross, or actually, no, we'll just stick with that. Uh, are there any animal anatomy books you could recommend? Um, I don't know specifically about an uh, animal anatomy books because I don't really have any. There are, you know, creature books and, and uh, artists out there that I really recommend. You know, Terrell Whitlatch is one of the best that I really recommend um, for that sort of thing. Um, but not not specific animal anatomy. I don't really. As a matter of fact, I don't really have any. Um, so I don't know what to tell you there. Um, but there's a lot on the internet. Yes, you know, I for a guy that teaches animal anatomy, it's surprising that I don't have animal anatomy books, but I just don't. It's all stuff that I've kind of <clears throat> gathered up on the internet or um, just studies that I've made over my over time and uh, over my lifetime. There we go. Sorry, I'm my brain's you're shorting out. Yeah. Your, your face is off the camera. There you are. <laughs> and, uh, and God. There you are. <laughs> Shameless plug. If you like this video, please hit the like and share buttons. Actually, no, really, if you do like the if you like the uh, the video, please hit the like and share buttons because that really helps us out. And uh, YouTube question. Thanks for the insights. I'm going back to skulls. Are there any skulls you'd like to acquire? Yes. I want some big skulls. So I want... Um, I'd love to get an elk, and I, they don't have to be real skulls because I don't want any animals, especially these big animals, uh, hurt in the process. But I would love, uh, like a hippo skull, an elephant skull. Um, actually, let me do this here. There we go. I would love an elephant skull. You don't want a big skull. Yeah, I don't know where I'd put it, but. Well, you can just put it here in your office. Yeah. I'm sure it'll fit. If you clear everything out. Yeah. There we go. There. Okay. Now I want to get some of this texture on. I'd love a T Rex skull, but they're a hundred grand though. <laughs> yeah. You Actually, have a gorilla skull. I don't. I used to have a cast of a gorilla skull, um, but uh, I don't know what happened to it. I think it's in storage. Had a hand too, a gorilla hand cast. Oh really? Yeah, it was from a zoo specimen that had passed away, and they did death 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 cast of the skull or of the face and the uh, hand, and. Uh, it's pretty sad, but it's it's also very cool how he was able to how they were able to use him to you know even in death he was he was helping to educate. Yeah, looks like got a few few more. Uh... Question: When should someone start posting their art on social media? I think whenever you feel comfortable with it, do it anytime. Um, I you know when you feel like it it's ready to go, then get out there and do it. Uh, Nick says, "Have you ever shown a oh Have I ever shown the giraffe skull on video? You know, I don't know that I have. I may have. Let me. Um, I'm going to do one more thing real quick. I just want to while I'm here. I'm going to darken some of these shadows just a little bit. But the, I'm going to show you something very cool. I've got a giraffe skull. This is a real giraffe skull. I picked this up in a taxidermy shop." 
in Texas. I'll show you how big a giraffe is. There we go. Let me get this in here. Sorry, I just want to make sure. I'm trying to push some of these shadows a little darker. So I feel like I'm really getting a better sense of light. Random question. Uh, how many videos should it, an animation student include in their demo reel applying to Pixar? You know, it, it's not a matter of the number. It's the quality. Just make sure that the, the videos that you have in there are good, strong acting. Because, you know, don't put in your walk cycles from first year and all that kind of stuff. You don't, no one wants to see that stuff. What they want to see is your acting chops. And so, you know, put in the scenes that are your best acting scenes. Don't, I don't think you need to go more than a few minutes worth of animation. Maybe it's five or six minutes. But, um, but you know, just don't, and, and don't quote me on that because it might, they might want to see more. But for me, I never needed to see any really more than that. And then, uh, and just make sure that it's really good quality acting. But, um, where's my, where is, oh, it's behind me, isn't it? Let's get, oh, it's a little tough to get right now. But, this thing is huge. Oh, it's heavy, too. I forgot how heavy it is. Ooh, the giraffe skull. Yeah, this is the giraffe skull. Oh. This is a real giraffe skull. Got this camera. Oh, right here? Yeah. So, ar, ar, I don't want to drop it. Ar. But you can see how big these are. This is a real deal. So, this is a giraffe skull. And, uh, I mean, it's just giant. Oh. Just and, the tip uh, of the... And it weigh, yeah, they weigh about 25 pounds. But it's a beautiful, beautiful skull. And uh, I love the form. And I, I, I've actually sketched it a few times. I really love it. I'm just going to put it here for now. Just don't trip on it when you get out. Oh, I know. So I want to start putting some environmental elements in here, too. So right now, I'm still... I want to push some of these darks coming up here. Because uh, I'd like to put some snow in here like I did in the other one, but just very sparingly. And yes, you can have snow and like blowing snow and a blue sky all at the same time. There, let's see. Robo on YouTube asks, have I ever tried abstract art? What do, you, what do I think of it? Yes, I have tried abstract art and I love doing it. It's a very great, for me, it's a great release. Um, to be able to do that. How do you define abstract art? Non-representational. Just randomness? It's not, well, see, that's the thing. Some people think of me, it's random, but it's not. It's, it's you know, a lot of it's very, very thought out uh, marks on a canvas or a paper or however you want to define it that are going to evoke an emotional response. I think some is bad, some is good. I mean, I think some is bad, or a lot is bad, and uh, uh, and some is very good. Um, so it just really depends on... I've always seen, like, Japanese calligraphy, like kanji, as a form of abstract art that I really love. All right, so I'm going to come over here and hit this. I want to go a little cooler with it, brighter. There. Like you're getting a little bit of reflected. And why don't you lights. illustrate a whole scene often, like a deer in a forest or a tiger in a jungle, and all the characters with a full background? I, I try to do it as often as I can. I have to, actually do do that every once in a while. But um, I get sometimes, I don't know. I think it's, I like I like focusing on the faces a lot of times because that's where the personality is. And that's uh, that's kind of where I, I end up going to. I know it's kind of my 
my my go to is that that portrait in a in a vignette background and um you know it's I don't always do that but yeah you're right I do I do it a lot <coughs> and um it's just because I think I'm trying to I'm going for that personality I want you to see their personality it's all right so can you please do one environment art at some point in the future yes yes hey. Like, all right, if you have to twist my arm. <laughs> well, you just got to get that Scott in there, don't you? Oi. Um, uh, YouTube uh, comment. I think this mammoth could have longer eyelashes. Elephants already have huge long eyes, uh, eyelashes, and a mammoth would need it against the snow. You know what? person on YouTube you know what I think you're absolutely right what happened to the Dustin character we talked about Tuesday oh Dustin Dustin Schmushton <laughs> what uh -huh. what does that mean I don't know what does it mean what does that even mean well, is this even real life is this real life is this real life <clears throat> and they they also their eyelashes are kind of crazy yellow Excuse me, holy moly. All over the place. <laughs> my cat is saying hi and sitting on my intro so I can't draw along. Give that cat flying lessons. <laughs> Ready to fly? Fly! <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. Longer eyelashes, baby. You nailed it. Do you have a an artistic comfort zone? A set of things you like to draw over anything else? Yeah, animals. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> animals. <coughs> Man, I coughed hard. I can't talk. I'm getting stuck like this. And as an illustrator, do you think that a detailed background could rest impact to the pick well no i think a background is as much a part of the, as much of a part of the uh the as far as the elements go as any other part of the image it's just that you don't have to plan it all especially when i'm doing a live stream um you know getting that background in there sometimes you know it takes a while to plan that out for me from a compositional standpoint i've seen an original black wing pencil that was owned by a, a disney artist selling for 50 bucks is, <laughs> it, is it worth it no no don't do that don't buy it a, that's a ridiculous disney artist black wing pencil for 50 bucks <laughs> That's just retarded. 50 bucks for a pencil. Okay. Yeah, no, that's just, that's someone trying right. to cash in. Don't give them the satisfaction, whoever's asking that. Don't do it. Hi, Aaron, how come I cannot buy from the site? I don't know. Nick, do the thing. Nick, do the thing. Maybe there's a, there's a run. And it's shutting down. <clears throat> of the hacker. Oh. There we go. Image rotation. How are we? There we go. What time is it? It's two forty-nine. So we've only been at it for an hour and forty-nine minutes. That's not bad. And also, it's like <laughs> is this <laughs> YouTube question? Is this mammoth doing a slow-motion hair flip? Maybe it's just me. <laughs> <laughs> I used to do that. Used to, not anymore. I used to could. Used to kid. <laughs> I used to could. Well, I used to could. Give me a minute, I might could again. <laughs> but uh, Austin said that um, she'll be coming over on 245 with the kids. Oh, my grandkids. Your grandkids. Those little bastards. I love those kids. 
those crazy little monsters. All right, so let's do this. I'm going to put a little oh, there, a little lighter there. Let's get some texture in there. Both had your lunch? I have not yet, but I'm planning to in, in a little bit. Uh, yes, I had a corned beef sandwich. A, a Reuben. A Reuben. A Reuben. A Reuben. Nice. It was delicious. I bet it was delicious. <clears throat> oh, I hear it. I hear it. Nope. You heard it too? Yep. Oh boy, I think we're going to be having to finish up here. Yep. Let me put my layer, a little, a layer over the top. Oh. Harry, move faster. I know, right? I know, right? It's like so crazy. There. Let's get a little bit over the top. The mammoth is flicking his hair because it's worth it. <laughs> because it's worth it. <laughs> nice. I like it. Because I'm worth it. How do you like the feel of the pen on the screen? Is there less space between the glass and the pen? Yeah, there's no parallax. There's no parallax at all. So the pen, right where the pen touches, that's where the cursor is. It's very, very cool. I love it. <clears throat> Do I want snow on him? Should I go down that route again? No. Honestly, I think <laughs> don't this is don't do fun. that. Don't, Aaron. Don't. You're, you're going to ruin it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Let's see here. Now, honestly, just like. Nice light snow like that. That that feels right. That feels pretty good, eh? Yeah. Right. That feels right. Right. That feels just a bit right. All right. Let's see. Just like in the lift in <laughs> Scotland. <laughs> You're an idiot. You're funny. <laughs> All right. There we go. Listen, yeah, so wasn't there a scene in Rick and Ralph too where he becomes Bob Ross? Yes, where Ralph. What acted as Bob Ross? Oh, really? There is. Yeah, there is. And when when that bit came up, it was only for like three seconds. But when that happened, I laughed so hard because <laughs> I instantly thought of you. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> like, awesome! I was like, "Oh my dad! Oh my god, dad would love this." <laughs> <laughs> because it was during the scene where he's like going through like all the different uh, viral videos and. All this and that for like <laughs> different reactions and everything, and and Bob Ross came up and I I couldn't breathe. I was laughing so hard. That's hilarious. So, do you hear? Could you hear my granddaughter crying in the background? She hates getting dropped off, and then all of a sudden, she's my best little buddy. Not with me though. <laughs> You're scary, man. I don't. I don't know why I'm so scary. Look at you. I try not to. You look like a freaking Sasquatch. Do I look scary? <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, so I'm just going to finish this up. I'm going to go finish it. Going to finish it. So this is my redone mammoth. I feel is a lot better than the other mammoth that we did yesterday. And uh, actually, I really like this. It kind of, I'm kind of happy with how it came out. I think the background could be a little different. Um, and I, I definitely could work it more to get rid of the, the line drawing underneath. But for for the time we had, and considering my granddaughter is here screaming, um, I think it's, think it's not too bad. I mean, that was just two hours, two hours worth of work over the sketch. Someone off topic, but do any of you, like Nick, Aaron, or Dustin, do any of you guys play tabletop RPGs? You'd be great at it and would enjoy it. Uh, me? No. I was never part of an RPG tabletop, like uh, Dungeons and Dragons, but I would. I used to play a lot of uh, World of, uh, not World of Warcraft, uh, Warhammer 40, 40 uh, K. And with that, I was able to build up and paint my own models and everything, and 
Kind of a lot of fun. Uh, what canvas size is this? This is 12 by 24 inches at 300 DPI. So let me finish this up really quick for you guys. Let's save it. And I'm going to take all of this and put that into a folder and we're going to repeat the folder and then I'm going to layer it. I'm going to flatten it. I'm going to merge it. Come on, baby. Merge that group. Now, one thing I want to do is I'm going to put a layer on top, set that to multiply. I want to push that darkness just ever, ever so much. Just a little bit. So I'm going to do a little gradient right here. There's that little gradient. See there? Yeah, see? We like you. See there? Yeah. Oops, that's not supposed to happen. What are you doing? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yep, she's she's not having it. You might have to go and uh, do some do the thing. Hold on, I gotta Me? get this layer. Hold on, layer merge layers. Um, I gotta repeat this. I, man, I'm flying now because I got a little kid. <laughs> and it's adjustments. Uh, okay, on. we're gonna push that saturation just a touch. Don't forget to save. It's all saved. It's all I did. Saved. I did want to lose some of the edges, but I'm just going to leave it now. And um, let's. Uh, 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 let me going to do. What am I going to do? I'm going to <laughs> just take a moment and breathe. There we go. Get rid of this. We're going to drop that opacity way down to eight percent. We're going to go to color dodge. I'm not sure how this is going to work, but let's try it. Let's burn some of that in. Really get some light on the subject. Just burn it. Oh, yeah. I went a little hot on that. I like it. And then right in here on the husk. Got a little heat there on the tusk up here. Pinky Tuscadero. Nick Hazel says, I just bought your brush set. Right on, man. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to run over here. Let's just do this just a little bit while I can. You're almost there. Just want to soften some of these edges where I just burned it. To give that kind of a glare kind of Yeah, feel. just yeah, I just like to I like to lose edges where I can. It just helps. Just losing a few edges here and there. Is nice. What's the coupon code again? Coupon code is Mammoth. M A M M O T H. If you, uh, if you are watching today, head on over to creatureartteacher.com. And pick up a, uh, a lesson or two or paintbrushes or whatever you want. And when you check out, put in the discount code MAMMOTH and you're going to get 20% off. You're going to get MAMMOTH SAVINGS. Yay! Yay! <laughs> there, got some fur there. Just softening just a touch here and there. fixing things up here and there doing whatever yeah I want to get like see that just softening some of these edges really kind of gets it to sit nicely <clears throat> yeah
Yes, yes, I like that. It's a beauty. It's a beauty, eh? It's a beauty, eh? Makes you want to write on his back while drinking a beer. Yeah. <laughs> In the frozen hostile wasteland. There we go. There. That might be a little much, but can always erase it back. So there's my mammoth um, to, for today. I've still got a lot of work I can do on this, but um, I got a, a little granddaughter to go attend to. So thanks, you guys, for hanging out today. That was a fun two hours. Um, remember, if you've got a bad piece of art, don't give up on it. You can always go back and rework it, do whatever. And sometimes it's better just to move on and start over. But today, I really wanted to show you that, especially in the digital world, you can peel away some of those old layers and say, you know what, I'm going to start over. I'm going to recompose. I'm going to do everything, you know, using art that you already did. So in this case, I used the drawing that I had already created the day before and just recomposed it and uh, changed a little bit of it and then repainted it. And completely, we have a completely different uh image if you look at these two images together whoops where did it go did i just it lose behind, it it went behind that one oh right here picture there we got yeah. this so if i turn this on right here so there's there's the image i did yesterday right here for some reason your um your mammoth came onto my screen oh it did yeah look over here <laughs> That's weird. So you might want to drag that out of there. Oh, am I over there? Yep. Oh, there it is. And there you go. Oh, yeah, that's weird. <laughs> so there's uh, so there is the mammoth there, and then uh, here's the one we did today, which I think is more interesting and a lot more fun and dramatic and uh, whatever. So just remember, you can change things up and have fun with that. Um, I got to go attend to my granddaughter. I had a great time with you guys today. So uh, we're going to see you next week on Tuesday. But remember, we will not be here on Thursday as I'm going to be up in Bozeman, Montana, photographing lions and tigers and bears. Oh, my. And having a great time. And uh, But you know, until then, have a great week. Have a great weekend. Put some beauty back in the world. Go paint a mammoth. <laughs> do, do something. Have some fun. I really enjoyed having you guys with me today. I hope you guys had a good time. And with that, put your grocery cart away. And Dustin, take it away. See you guys later. Camera <laughs>